<laughs> just staring at me. Is that straight? Looking at myself in the reflection when I asked that question? No, not straight, not straight at all. <laughs> hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. My name is Drew, my pronouns are they, them, and this is my channel where I make videos all about my mental health and improving it in hopes that inspires you all to improve your mental health as well. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I cope with my severe anxiety and panic attacks and just what it's like living with generalized anxiety disorder in the second video of a series I've called Just Surviving my own mind. In this series, I'm talking about the mental health disorders that I deal with in hopes that it maybe helps someone out there who is also struggling with what's going on in their own mind and helps them to feel a little less alone. Just as a quick disclaimer, I am not a mental health professional nor do I claim to be an expert on any of the things that I discuss on my channel. I'm just a person talking about my own personal experiences with the hopes that maybe someone out there will relate and feel a little less alone. Lastly, I will do my best to be as thorough as I can about putting trigger warnings as they're warranted in the videos throughout this series. I do apologize in advance if I do forget or miss one, but do keep in mind that this is a video, a part of a series talking entirely about mental health. So if you're easily triggered by talk about that, it might be best to skip this series entirely or until you're ready to watch. So at the beginning of the panoramic, I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, also known as GAD or GAD, according to my old doctor. I was diagnosed with that along with panic attacks. And then a few months later, I was also diagnosed with mild agoraphobia and social anxiety. And since I spent such a long time being so focused on my ADHD diagnosis, which if you're interested, you can watch that video up there all about my experience living with ADHD. I never really processed what GAD or any of my other anxiety disorders were or how significantly they affect me. I've always been anxious. For as long as I can remember, I've had anxiety. Just like I knew I had ADHD, I've always known that I had debilitating anxiety, even before I knew that there was a word for it or that there were such thing as anxiety disorders. For a long time, I just assumed that everyone was as anxious as I was. And then when I found out that they weren't, I blamed all of my anxiety on my trauma, which I'd say is partly true, but I also never got help for it because I was convinced that things would never change and that something was just wrong with me and that I'd have to live with it forever. As a child, my anxiety stemmed from being bullied, as well as school in general, because I was undiagnosed ADHD. I also have sexual assault trauma that causes me debilitating anxiety around boys and men that I still deal with to this day. So with everything I went through as a child and teenager, my anxiety really just took over my life but it was never addressed by any professionals. And because it was never addressed, it took a really long time for it to even be validated for me. And even then, I still hadn't processed how substantial my anxiety actually was and still is. To be totally honest, I really didn't understand the weight of it until December of 2021. During that month, I dealt with several very stressful events that to the average person without any anxiety disorders may not have seen as that stressful. These events happened one after another, a couple of which were health scares with my dog that did not warrant the amount of catastrophizing I did. And with that catastrophizing, not only did I expect and prepare for the worst, but I overprepared, and that overpreparation had to be as thorough and as perfect as possible. All of this overpreparation ended up leading to me having a panic attack, which my mom then had to spend over three hours on the phone talking me down and then distracting me so I wouldn't spiral again. And because I had convinced myself that my overpreparation was just me coping with my difficulty handling uncertainty, I didn't realize that those actions are literally symptoms of generalized anxiety disorder. If any of you are interested in learning more about GAD, I will be putting the resources that I use in this video in the description box below. So once I finally made the connection with the help of my mom, so thank you mom, I started to recognize the patterns of GAD symptoms throughout all of my life. And once I could see that, I realized throughout all of those years, I thought I was coping with my anxiety when really I was just fueling it. And I don't really blame myself for that, especially because of the complete lack of mental health education growing up, but also because I was just so focused on my ADHD diagnosis before and after I got it. It brought up so much trauma
trauma as well as just thoughts and emotions for me. That even though I was experiencing GAD symptoms and I recognized that I was in fact dealing with anxiety as well as imposter syndrome, I didn't make the connection that my fears, panic, and incessant worrying was GAD. Just like I didn't make a connection to certain anxiety symptoms being my agoraphobia and social anxiety. I do plan on making a separate video talking about my agoraphobia and social anxiety, so if you are interested in that, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on that or any of my other future uploads. I know I made a video a little while back talking about my GAD, and since then I've gotten on an antidepressant called mirtazapine. That seems to work. Like, it's not making me worse, but but also if it is helping, that means that my anxiety could be worse than it is, which is a pretty sobering thought. Because although my anxiety has been bad all my life, it's arguably at its worst right now, which is pretty understandable given the climate. And I'm not just talking about the climate crisis. But anyway, even when I made that video, I still hadn't fully grasped or processed the way my GAD affects me and how detrimental it is to my overall health. And beyond that, I also didn't make the connection that my incessant and unrelenting money anxiety oral health anxiety, and I'm not talking about going to the dentist, I'm okay with going to the dentist, but looking at my teeth and seeing that my gums are receding will literally send me into a panic attack. As well as my anticipatory grief, aka pre-morning, are a lot harder to cope with and that much more intense because of my GAD. Since it's constantly triggering not only my fight or flight response, but also frequent panic attacks. And what really sucks about that is even when I have a stable income or I've just been told by the dentist that my mouth is healthy, or when I remind myself that those who I'm pre-morning are still alive, or whatever other reassurance I tell myself, it still doesn't stop the panic attacks or severe anxiety. I do cope as well as I can, and I have good days, which I do my best to enjoy but unfortunately, I tend to have more bad days than good. And although my coping mechanisms help, they don't always work. More recently though, I've been trying different coping mechanisms, as well as revisiting ones I've previously used but didn't stick with, because it can take some time and regular practice to notice the benefits. Plus, it can be really hard to stick with things that don't offer instant gratification, results, or benefits when you have ADHD. I know that a really good way to release pent-up tension or emotions as a result of my anxiety and stress is by having a good ol' ugly cry session. I'm already a pretty emotional person, so it really really doesn't take much for me to cry, at least when I'm alone. But lately, although the littlest thing can get the tears started, they don't usually last long enough for the cry to feel very cathartic. I know triggering my anticipatory grief can bring me to a cathartic cry, but it's probably more likely to cause me to have a panic attack which I'm trying to avoid. Another option is to watch a sad video or episode of a show. And I know that this would be really effective and less likely to result in a panic attack, but truthfully, I've been putting it off because I know that it means I'll have to be sad and it's gonna be really draining for me. Now, earlier I mentioned that although my coping mechanisms can be helpful, they don't always work. And this is true, but I still wanna share them with you all because it might be valuable to someone watching. I have shared most of these in previous videos, so you may have heard them before if you are regular or just not new to my channel. I also want to point out that they're not all healthy or proactive coping mechanisms. I do often self-medicate by using weed, which I want to point out is legal in Canada, but sometimes it's the only thing that allows me to relax at night. Another coping mechanism I use is mindfulness, and I will always recommend mindfulness in some capacity as a coping mechanism. That doesn't necessarily mean doing a 10 or 20 minute meditation. Sometimes that's just repeating a mantra that resonates with you over and over again, or just taking a minute to focus on your breathing in some way can be really helpful, or just a temporary distraction from your anxious thoughts. Another thing that can be helpful, which I tend to struggle a lot with, is talking with friends and family. I tend to struggle in silence because I have a really hard time asking loved ones for space or help, especially since my brain often convinces me that I'm a burden. So a lot of times I'll use talking with friends or family as a way to distract myself instead of being vulnerable and opening up about my anxious thoughts. But if I can afford it, I will schedule a therapy session so that way I can take up space and be vulnerable and open about how I'm feeling. I 
do also use sleep or just my bed to cope a lot of times. I'll sleep a lot more or just spend the day in bed watching something, only getting up to attend a smooch or my basic needs. Something I do struggle a lot with when I use sleep or just my bed as a coping mechanism is feeling guilty for not being productive or spending too much time in bed. But those are times where I'm able to really focus on practicing mindfulness and my self-compassion. The last couple of coping mechanisms that I could think of are that I tend to eat whatever I feel like without worrying if it's healthy or not. Anxiety usually ruins my appetite, so just getting something into my stomach is all I really care about. And finally, if my pain isn't too bad and the weather is nice enough, I'll go on a walk. I may or may not bring Smooch, my dog, because he's a little anxious boy, which sometimes is a really good distraction for me and other times it makes my anxiety worse. So it really just depends. But these are all the coping mechanisms that I could think of. Oh, I do also use my work I have to do for my YouTube videos as a way to cope since it can be a great means of distraction. With my anxiety being as bad as it is, especially lately, I don't often allow myself to just sit in those uncomfortable thoughts since it can so quickly take over and lead to a panic attack. I know that for a lot of people, meditation is the solution to that, but it requires regular and consistent practice to get there. And if you're familiar enough with ADHD, you'd know that consistency is extremely challenging without instant gratification. Now, if you've seen my last video, which was the first video in this series where I talk about my ADHD, you might know that at the end, I mentioned systems that I've created for myself that have been very effective in helping me just be consistent in general, which in turn is helping me to build habits and routines. With all of that being said, I recently decided to try and add daily meditation into my system in hopes that I can practice consistently enough to eventually make it a habit within my everyday routine. I do intend to document the whole process and eventually make a video out of it, but I don't currently have a set timeline on that yet. If that does interest you and you haven't already, definitely hit the subscribe button and notification bell. That way you'll be the first to know when that video is posted and you can keep up with the videos that I post in between. I wanted to thank you all so much for watching this video and if you did enjoy or resonate or just found the video helpful in some way, please be sure to hit the like button because it really does support my channel. And if you haven't already, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Lastly, be sure to follow me on all of my social media. They're always the pinned comment in the comments and that way you can keep up with me in between my bi-weekly videos. Please don't forget to be gentle with yourself because you absolutely deserve it. I want to thank you all again for watching this video and I will see you all next time. Bye. Drew, my pronouns are they, oh, I keep like twitching out when I can't remember what I'm saying. Welcome back to my channel. Hello everyone. <sighs> it's like to live with, oh, um, is my, uh, let's just make sure that, with generalized anxiety disorder mind and feel help. So at the beginning of the, scared the shit out of me. Oh, am I being too picky? Probably. So at the beginning of the pandemic, no. Does that look any different than before? Probably not, but that's fine. I know I made a video quite, blah, 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 grasped. Grasped? I don't know how to say that word. Hey Google, how do you say grasped when you have ADHD? I know triggering my anticipatory, I know I'm so close to a cathartic cry. That's all I gotta say. I know triggering my cathartic, no, <laughs> that's not right. My nose is so shiny. And if you're familiar, and if you're familiar, I feel like that's too like whatever. Uh, I do intend to, I do intend to, to what? To document it. Document the whole process and make a video. I do intend to make a pro, blah, 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 up with all of my future uploads. Oh, off. Okay. Please be sure to like, fuck me sideways. I was so close. Media, they're always the pinned comment in the comments and, mm, is that high enough? Okay. That should be good, right? Am I too short here? Oh, am I done? Oh my goodness, I'm done. Oh, it took so long. <laughs> oh, goodness. I'm done at 1 a.m. That's not even that bad. Oh, yes, bedtime. <laughs>